Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion and the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Here, I'll discuss the tarot card that sits on the side of the page. Then I'll do a quick review of the day's aspects before I play another card, which may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The card that currently sits on the side of the page is the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands relates astrologically to the last 10 days or the third decan of the sun's transit in the land of Leo. Leo is a fire sign. Wands and Tarot are fire element as well. Fire element sim symbolism has to do with spark, drive, initiative, motivation, um, those feelings that arise in us, restlessness, impatience even, that cause us to want to act, to move forward on something, to achieve some aim. And with the Seven of Wands here, we see um, a moment. If we look back on the six of, six of Wands, we just had a celebration, right? Where, where you've achieved something, we've achieved something really big and people are celebrating us. Well, often in close behind a victory like that comes the competition, right? The people who are going to come after you and sort of try to knock you off of your high point. So, um, you know... It's funny that the song just came into my mind, like nobody's going to break my stride. Nobody's going to slow me down, right? <laughs> I got to keep on moving. So one way to to uh, beat your competitors back is to stay ahead of the game, all right? Like um, part of maintaining that higher ground is always kind of like reaching even higher ground. <laughs> um, but, you know, this, can, this looks like a very defensive position. Um, that's often what I see when I see this is sort of like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm fighting off my competition, um, trying to maintain control of a situation, uh, seeking to persevere in, our, in my dominant position here um, as long as I can. So even though we have achieved a great success and even though we have capital to parlay into even further success, we have to understand that there will always be competitors coming for us, right? So we don't get to stop fighting. We don't just get to lay down our wand and, and maintain our higher ground, right? Once we have had that achievement, we're going to have to fight to keep it ours. We're going to have to fight to maintain um, a place of prominence. And, you know, I think that's good. We need things to fight for. And with all that said, I'm going to shuffle some cards while I remind myself and the cards that the sun is in Leo today. So, you know, as we sort of get into this last decan of Leo and we start to reflect on this summer well spent, you know, um, we might tend to sort of aggrandize ourselves and the stories that we tell, or we might tend to exaggerate a little bit about the about the tales we tell of our adventures this summer. Uh, Venus is also in Leo, uh, really kind of big, bold demonstrations of of affection and and love and desire are probably very much on the table. Avoid, you know, extravagant spending. We're showing off in a way that, um, you know, that doesn't really reflect, truly reflect how you're feeling. And on the moon side of the page today, the moon is a waning gibbous and in Pisces. And this is so uh, appropriate because in Pisces, we become very sort of relaxed and reflective. It's, a, it's an emotional time, but it's also just in a time to sort of uh, regroup before we go because it's the end of the cycle. We'll go, we'll go back into Aries in a couple of days. So while we're regrouping, Winning Gibbous says we're reflecting. We're looking back on those achievements that we just scored. That you know all that work that we did to in increase, <laughs> to 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 gain the increase, to gain to gain the culmination that we celebrated with the full moon. And now we're looking back on it, and uh, we take a sort of critical eye toward how it went. You know, we can definitely think of the things that we would not like to have go down the next time, um, you know, and also the things that we would like to have. So this helps us sort of, it's like the moon still has some light. And so we use that light to take inventory of what it is that we're carrying and having that inv inventory of what we're carrying, we have an idea then what we can also let go. 
on the moon side of the page today moon goes in opposition to mercury so we are feeling at odds with our thoughts at this time it's like our feelings are sitting on one shoulder and our rational mind is sitting on the other sh shoulder and it's our uh, job to sort of reconcile the very different things they're saying to us okay that can be a little confusing okay so if you're feeling confused just understand that now is not a time to really commit to anything that's a it's a lunar um, aspect so it really takes about two hours before it starts to fade and then later tonight at about 8 49 uh, moon goes sextile to Uranus and so you know I'm thinking it probably bring a little bit of positive emotion a little joy and happiness and um, excitement you know if we get out and do something different from our routine that's what Uranus wants so if if we feel like getting out and doing something different with our routine that sextile vibe is saying yes it's very cooperative it wants to generate a good time for us so go have some fun enjoy yourself folks and then on the on the sun side of the page, we have a lot of stuff in the ongoing column. I'm just going to whip out my uh, my card of retrogrades here. We have one, two, three, four, five planets retrograde, four planets and an asteroid, pardon me, retrograde at this time, and or three planets, I don't know. We call Pluto a planet in astrology. So um, these planets are... Uh, you know, all retrograde. And basically what retrograde is, it takes the vibe of the planet, the influence that planet has in our lives. And all of these planets have placements in our chart. All of them have some sort of influence in our lives. And it, and it turns that it turns that influence, it sort of shines its light on the inside of our body so that we see how Pluto's transformational vibe is affecting us, what kind of changes we might be going through. Uh, you know, we see how Jupiter's, um, you know, growth and expansion vibes might be affecting us on the inside and how we're working on, on working with those energies from the inside. And it's really a good time because we're kind of empowered at this time to see it and therefore to be able to choose how we're going to work with those energies. Love retrograde for that reason. And listen, one single retrograde, like back earlier this year, we had Venus in retrograde for six weeks. One single retrograde can take us through some personal transformations. Uh, we have five on the page now, and I think we're going to have seven on the page before we have any beginning to drop off. So, um, you know, hold on to your pants, friends. We might come out of this <laughs> out of this retrograde period just looking and feeling entirely different <laughs> and that might be a good thing that might that might really help us out hopefully you know it's their positive transformations that we're going through because definitely that's what we're working on right so uh, with all of that said if you ever want a deeper explanation of what like a pluto specific retrograde is or a saturn specifically retrograde is please leave a, mes a, a message in my uh, in the comments below and I will definitely inform you to the best of my ability. Um, I, I have been spending more time on these, but now they're demanding too much time. <laughs> so I'm just going to show them to you and then put them away. Venus is trying to Neptune right now and sextile to Mars and Mars is sextile to Neptune. So this is just like a beautiful... Um, love fest between these three uh, very sensual planets, okay? Venus is receptive, Mars is assertive, and Neptune just brings in the fantasy. And, you know, even though Neptune is retrograde right now, and so we can see the difference between our fantasy and our reality, that's okay. We still have that fantasy, right? So we can really dream. We're really blessed right now if we want to dream about those things we need and desire, about what it is from our fantasy life, our dream idea of what we of what we would like to see our life be, what we want to pull down into reality right now. Uh, if we're thinking about that, and especially if we can express it in an elegant and creative way, spirit is listening, They want, the spirit wants to know uh, what would delight you at this time. And then Venus sextile to Mars, very generative, very creative, very fertile kind of vibe. You can literally create things out of your collaborations with people who who complement you in their skill sets. And then Mars sextile to Neptune rounds that out and says, yeah, we're feeling very sensual and dreamy right now. We, we have this uh, boldness and this courage, this sort of directness about us, and we really desire to connect at this time. So, um, you know, take advantage of those 
beautiful vibes at this time. And then Mars is also square to Saturn at this time. So, you know, there's generative power here. We can create things. We can dream about what we want to create. We can get, you know, we can get very sensual. We can get into the physical feeling and act of creation um, very happily at this time. But, but if you're pushing too hard for something, it's not going to happen. <laughs> That's what Mars square Saturn says. Okay, so if you're trying too hard, um, it's, it's going to be obvious because you won't be getting anywhere. And if you're not getting anywhere, then you need to back off and, uh, you know, make a different plan. <laughs> okay, Venus is also opposite to Pluto right now. This can bring in some envy, a little bit, bit of jealousy when we see other people having the nice things that we would like to have. Jealousy is instructive, though. It tells, it, it really helps us figure out what we want. You know, some of us aren't really very good at knowing what we want until we see something and we're like jealous of somebody else for having it. And they're like, and then I'm like, hmm, yeah, I think that's I think that's what I would like to go for. Okay, so jealousy is instructive that way. It helps us see what we desire, uh, and we can you know do away with the pettiness that comes along with it, right? And just be happy for people um, getting what it is that they like to have um, as proof, also that we can get what we like to have. Speaking of getting what we like to have. North Node and Uranus are conjunct, uh, again, just for a couple more days through the 15th. This has been going on for a while. So, you know, Uranus has been hanging out in Taurus, sort of shaking up our supply chain and our ability to get the things we need and desire. Uranus came in and, like, gas prices were super high and it looked like groceries were going to keep going up, all right? So it sort of brought this, uh, this shifting availability of our resources to uh, a sort of a head or a sort of a, you know, an, a more intense vibration that we would notice it more. So um, that's, you know, that can be anxiety inducing. It can be a little bit annoying. We have to be willing to remain flexible about how we get what we need and desire. And the sun is square to that conjunct. The sun is square to Uranus, which means it's square to uh, North Node. They're conjuncts, so they're occupying the same place in the sky. And that sun square it's really like a, like a what is about to happen sort of vibe. It, it feels like anticipation. It feels like there is a build up. It feels like something is coming down, but we don't know what is going to come down. And I'm going to look forward here with you. Uh, next Thursday, the sun is going to go coincunx to Neptune. And that is really... Um, a potential turning point for us. It's a, it's act, either an opportunity just to pivot, or it can actually be something that happens in, especially our outer lives, that um, you know, that just sort of changes our direction and changes our focus. So um, I'm putting those two together and crossing my fingers. Sun is also trying to Chiron at this time. That is a blessing. It just says, you know. Um, you, we have lowered our defenses and we are going to get out there and be our beautiful, beautiful selves and find the support we desire. Um, and, uh, you know, the sun says when you, when you get out there and try to do that, you will have a positive, a positive experience. Okay. You will uh, be blessed and protected by spirit in doing so. So with all of that said, one more stack of cards. No, I'm not doing that. How did we get that again? Temperance. <laughs> I turned over the Knight of Cups and I said, no. So I got temperance. And more cups. <laughs> all right, so we'll look at them all together. Um, and since they came out in this order, that's fine. The Knight of Cups, we looked at it a couple of times with the Six of Wands. And I, you know, I am, I am an Aries sun. I am, a, I can be a little bit impatient. So I don't like to look at the same thing over and over again. There's 78 cards in here and I'm just waiting for one to pop out that we haven't seen yet, but that will happen. So uh, we have the, the Knight of Cups here, which is again about being in touch with how you feel and also being in touch with your intuition. And um, I pointed this out before. I'm going to say it again. You know, the Knight of Cups uh, is sort of here by a stream. That's water in motion. Water is our emotions our, and our intuitions. And it's almost like we can feel something, we can notice something, we can intuit something, and and we can see where it's going, right? We can see how it's moving, the direction it's moving in. And so we can still really have an idea where it's going to lead us, right? 
So that's really, you know, Neptune retrograde. That is emotional and intuitive clarity. That is having a feeling and knowing what it's about and also knowing where it's taking us, right? And that's really beautiful uh, because, you know, a lot of times um, I think a lot of us don't necessarily feel very in control of how we feel or very in control of, you know, like what, you know, like we'll feel a certain way and we'll just follow our nose on that. And um, it'll, <laughs> it'll lead us in a direction we didn't really want to go, right? So if you have that clarity and you know where things are going, like, um, for instance, we have this potential for jealousy to arise. And if that, if that jealousy arises, right, um, if Neptune were direct, you might just think, you know, well, that person has something that I, that I want, and so I'm going to be really petty to them. And you might not really um, understand what it is you're doing or why you're doing it or that the jealousy is just an expression of like you desiring something. Um, but with this emotional clarity that we have right now, when that jealousy arises, arises, it should just be easy to see like, oh, this is jealousy and it's showing me what it is that I want, but um, I'm going to, I'm just going to choose to be happy for this person. And then temperance comes in and talks about sort of the mature handling of of energy, energetic flows. Okay. Temperance is one foot in the water and one foot on the land. So that's one foot in the emotions and intuitions, right? And one foot, you know, firmly in reality, firmly on the material side of life. And you see this person um, is sort of splashing water back and forth between their cups in a way that looks a little gravity defying. And that's not a mistake. Okay. Um, it's almost as though once you have learned how to um, manage your emotional and intuitive flow, like, you know, manage knowing how you feel and realizing what that means and where it is taking you, um, then you, you know, it, it, it's almost as though you can begin to do magical things with that, right? Uh, when you know that you feel jealous and you can make a choice not to let it affect the way you treat somebody, that's temperance, right? Okay, so uh, positive balance of flows. And you see the little trine on temperance's shirt there. Trine is the blessing of spirit. Okay, this is says, this says spirit is looking out for you and, uh, and blessing your actions, okay? And blessing your reactions, right? It gives you a superhuman ability to um, sort of transmute ugly things into beautiful things. And I see that here with this, you know, Venus, Neptune, and Mars thing. Uh, we can get really creative. We can uh, really manage our energies well. We know what it is that we desire. We know what we'd like to draw in. We know what we'd like to create with our collaborators and it, and, and it's not hard work. You know, once we have the management of these emotional and intuitive faculties, it's not hard work. All right. You shouldn't have to work too hard. Maybe the first couple of times, the first couple of times you catch yourself feel, feeling jealous and you like, you know, choke it back and you're like, okay, this shows me what I want, but I'm not going to be petty. I'm not going to be petty. I'm not going to be petty. Right. Um, it can be a little bit difficult, but it gets easier. I promise <laughs> it taken together, uh, with, uh, I, I, I also want to say feeling at odds with our thoughts here, you know, like having the emotions on one shoulder and the rational mind on the other sh shoulder and really having to kind of balance for ourselves, the, the different things they're telling us so that we can decide what we're going to do with that information going forward. That's a very temperance vibe as well. You know, often we are two minds or two hearts about a thing and we just have to, you know, make a choice and, and try to do the best thing, um, you know, for us to be able to manage ourselves well. And then taken together with the seven of wands, let me see, a person in a defensive position, trying to maintain control of a, of a situation, and then they they get in touch with their feelings and they learn this more mature way to manage perhaps you know maintaining that higher ground right once you once you develop a system you're not going to be out there on you know 
on the edge of your own personal high ground, you know, beating people back with a stick. Once you once you get a system in place, once you have a mature way of, of handling um, your own emotional and spirited reactions to things, then, um, you know, it's going to be easier to maintain that high ground without feeling that you have to defend yourself. That's been one of, um, that's been a big, a big one for me in my life is, um, you know, I don't know if it's growing up Midwestern or what, but I, I, I always, I always or often felt uh, when I was younger as though everything I did, I had to be able to explain it to somebody. Everything I did had to be defensible. I had to be able to, to defend what I had done. Even if it was the simplest thing, like walking into somebody's you know, bathroom and washing my hands, <laughs> not just a random stranger's, not just, not just walking in a, ra a random stranger's house, but like if I were in your home and I walked into the bathroom and washed my hands without saying to you that I was going to do so first, then I might have to come out and like explain to you why I felt like I had to go wash my hands, which is silly, you know, like some things don't require explanation. Many things do not require defense, you know, taking care of ourselves for one thing, uh, is is not something that we have to defend, all right? Being in touch with how we feel and what our intuitions are telling us and where they're taking us is not something that we have to defend, all right? So, you know, um, be aware. This is telling me, be aware of when it is that you're feeling defensive, okay? We want to move away from this sort of defensive stance all the time. Not everything we do or say has to be defended. Um, not everything we do or say even has to be, um, you know, explained. Like sometimes if we say no to somebody, we feel like we have to say no because this and such and this and such. Um, you know, explain why we can't do, be, or have what it is that they want us to do, be, or have. But, you know, really... It suffices to say no, we are, you know, full autonomous human beings, each and every one of us. And if, if there's something that something that someone wants from us or wants to see out of us that we don't want to give, it's okay just to say no. All right. You don't have to defend that and you don't have to explain that. And notice where it's taking you also when you do, when that defensiveness does rise, when that, uh, that, that desire to explain yourself or that desire to defend what you, or just to even be like, well, you know, if I do that, then what would I tell them I was doing that for? <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, whenever that arises and you like sort of notice because you have this intuitive clarity right now, uh, notice where that defensiveness is taking you. Is it, is it going to help you out for real to, to, to think up reasons why you should be able to use a stranger's bathroom or something? So um, yeah, I hope that all made sense. It's very clear to me. <laughs> we, what, you know, a goal, a goal in life, you know, is being able to maturely handle our emotions and intuitions, okay, to understand what is going on in our heart and our mind, to understand, you know, where we are blessed and uh, where we have to keep a foot in reality and, you know, do the work. And I uh, and so that's what we're moving toward, right? We're, we want to lay down our arms. We've made achievements. We've done good things. We, we want to feel good about what we've done. And we don't want to have to keep fighting to sort of justify ourselves in the world. So, um, uh, you know, when you're ready to stop fighting to justify yourself in the world, um, this is saying get in touch with your feelings. Get in touch with your intuitions. Get in touch with where they're taking you, where you're going with those feelings and intuitions, and then make a choice about how you're going to respond to them because you do have a choice about how you're going to respond to them. You have a choice about how you're going to express yourself as well. Okay, I think that's all I have to say about it, friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.